Good afternoon. This is welcome day at my school, Southern Utah University. The gentleman in this photo is not our president or provost. In fact, as you can tell, it's not me either. This is Xavier. He is the educational director of the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, which the headquarters for the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah is just a few blocks from our campus. Xavier is invited to speak at our welcome convocation because he exemplifies what we call the Tavi way. Tavi is a Paiute or Aztec word which means the sun. The Tavi way denotes that each of us in our own right can and should be like the sun in that we should be bursting flames of brilliant energy that guide the way for others. Paiute students are few in number at, at our school. In fact, less than 1% of our student body population are Native American. But although small in number, they are mighty in spirit. And each of them have been bursting flames of brilliant energy that have guided the way for many others, including me. As I will explain, we've learned a lot from the Paiute community. But as I recently found, perhaps not quite enough to foster the student success that we want among our Native American students. At least not yet, anyway. At Southern Utah University, as many other institutions across the United States have found, Native American students typically persist and graduate at lower levels than any other demographic. At our institution, at 44%, they were the lowest among any demographic. It was this red flag in the data that inspired me to conduct a comprehensive research study to figure out why our Native American students were not persisting and graduating. This research, which I turned into my dissertation, explored the connection between Paiute students' perceptions of their learning environment and their development as future leaders through the construction of self-identities. This qualitative research, in, in essence, sought to explore how these Native American students were perceiving our practices. Because clearly these practices were not suiting all needs. Clearly, we did not have a one-size-fits-all program. I found a number of sticking points for our Native American students. Points of cultural clash that even the most well-intended faculty and staff did not know. And I myself had to reflect upon these cultural differences in conducting my research. I interviewed Paiute students and community members in talking circles instead of traditional westernized focus groups because Paiutes are very council oriented. Mutual respect is the ideal. In these talking circles, the speaker's voice is heard. They are not challenged, but a deep respect is found. The circle represents the holism of Mother Earth and that all individuals in the circle are equal. It was through the talking circle that I found many of the answers to the lingering questions that we had regarding why these Native American students were not persisting. And I want to share a few of these with you today. First, we have a beautiful cultural a center for diversity and inclusion on our campus. One of the five rooms inside the center is dedicated to our Native American students, but we found that our Paiute students were not taking advantage of the center of this, or of this room, and we could not figure out why. Through this research, I found that the answer is tribal. The name of the room was the Chapter House, which to most of us, that meant nothing. But as one Paiute explained, the Chapter House is a Navajo term. Navajos have chapters, Paiutes have bands. Out of respect, why would a Paiute enter a chapter house? And so our Paiute students were not taking advantage of the center, its resources, and the camaraderie because of words that hung on a door. But yet we all know words are powerful. And we know words hurt. As I found through the research, calling Native American ceremonial regalia a costume or mocking it through Halloween dress, or mocking ceremonial uh, dances or drum circles through athletic halftime performances can send unintended messages to our Native American students that they're, quote, weird or unwelcome. Through this research, I also found another sticking point for our Native American students, which may seem contrary to some of the best practices. 
their commitment to family can actually impede their student success. I remember a story of a Native American male student who abruptly left school prior to exams. The professors and his peers thought this was a student who clearly didn't appreciate academics and was just a, a slacker. But in fact, the student had been called home by his family because his sister had begun to menstruate. And he needed to go celebrate her passage into womanhood. You see, family is first. And celebrations such as this transcend all other priorities. As one Paiute explained, and I want to read this word for word so her voice is heard. When a ceremony happens, you do it right then. There is none of this Western four to six weeks of planning. And if you are expected to build the fire, or if you're expected to do the cooking, or if you're the one hauling the water, that's what is expected of you. And it does not matter if you have a paper due. So it makes things tough sometimes. We want to remove the barriers that are preventing our Native American students from becoming and further developing into these bursting flames of brilliant energy that guide the way of many's, many others. So we've taken the steps to start reconciling the differences, the cultural differences between our Native American students and our practices. For example, we first changed the name of this room in the center to one that is more neutral and welcoming for all Native American students. We created a center for uh, parents and families to help educate parents, in particular parents of first generation students, to help readjust and reset expectations. We created a questionnaire that all students fill out before they ever set foot on our campus. So that way we can be made aware of red flags and provide resources before school even starts. We've adopted a more holistic approach to our advising where we're trying to see students from a cultural based perspective. We've created a peer mentor system where every first year student that comes to SUU will have an upper class peer mentor for their entire first year. We've created a multicultural orientation. We've instituted the Tavi way throughout all of student affairs where we're asking all personnel to be this beacon, this guiding light to others, to put students first in all things. And we've restructured student government because another thing we found is we were systematically excluding voices of minorities from our own student government because they often would not participate in hierarchical westernized election process, which was counter to their council-based culture. We know many of these things are working, and because of the things we learned from our Paiute students we're implementing across the board, among other underrepresented students, our non-trads, vets, the LGBTQ community, and others, and we're seeing upticks in retention and graduation rates. But we know we have a lot more to do. Our charge remains that we must ensure that we are not systematically excluding students from their education. We must ensure that their voice is being heard across campus. We must choose to listen, to learn, to love, to respect, and to honor. We must each choose to be bursting flames of brilliant energy that guide the way for others, because that is the Tavi way. Thank you.